So as we can see here, we've gone ahead and executed the actual extreme overclock function, which actually brings us to actually our initially fast oriented frequency. So that 4.296, approximately 4.3 gigahertz. What we're looking to do now is actually extend the actual overclocking even further. So to go ahead and allow us to get actually even a higher level of performance. Now what is unique about this actual auto overclocking process and specific to our ASUS auto tuning technology is that this is the only real time dynamic auto overclocking uh, technology on the market. With other mechanisms, essentially you just have a fixed preset where engineers have essentially approximated a value that they feel is going to work for most CPUs. The problem with that is that CPUs vary from one to another. Some require more voltage, some require less voltage, some produce more heat than others. And then of course, this doesn't even take into consideration the variance that the user themselves has with the components that they pick, whether it's a different CPU cooler, a different power supply, different memory, different densities of memory, all the other type of variables that come into consideration when overclocking. So with our ASUS design, as you can see actually, the system was dynamically tuning itself and it was going through the process just like a manual overclocker would, where you attempt to actually increase the frequency, make adjustments, stress the system, and correspondingly increase key areas, such as voltage uh, for maybe the, the CPU, or maybe uh, for the BCCSA, which is actually a voltage for the memory controller, as we're running eight DIMMs. These are all a lot of different variables that come into play that can sometimes be complicated or complex. So we're automatically doing this for you, real time, specific to our system. So we can see we actually have some pretty good cooling in here, but we are running eight DIMMs, so that is another consideration to take into play. So this auto tuning process is now actually dynamically going through real time, making adjustments that are specific to our system. So overall, we're gonna see that after about eight to 10 minutes, we're gonna get a new outcome in terms of an actual maximum chief frequency, which would be really a kind of ideal frequency that's tuned to our specific configuration. You yourself might actually get a different frequency that could potentially be higher if you were to utilize a uh, higher end cooling device, such as maybe like an H80 or an H100 as opposed to the H60, uh, or you could potentially even get a lower device to go with the same configuration depending on your CPU margin. The big thing is, is that we're offering this exclusive technology to you that's going to be specific to your CPU. So as we can even see there, the actual reboot message that is part of the Windows boot process is actually reduced from its normal 30 seconds to only five seconds. That's because that's automatically been built into our auto-tuning software so as to attempt to allow you to scale quickly, easily, and effectively. So as actually we can see here, it's gone ahead and already completed its first successful increase to our baseline frequency. So originally we were running at 4.3 gigahertz, and now we've already now got up to actually 4.549 gigahertz. So you can see we've gone ahead and jumped up approximately another 250 megahertz. Now at this point, we could very easily go ahead and actually go down here to this stop button, click stop, and actually we would maintain that system frequency if we're happy with that. But as this is an extreme tuning preset and we're looking to further the performance as much as possible, it's actually going to attempt one additional level of scaling to see if we can actually push back, excuse me, push up a little bit further and see if we can get some more actually out of the CPU. So once the actual countdown stops, it's going to go ahead and attempt to actually scale a little bit more and see what else we can get out of the CPU. Once it actually gets back over to the desktop, what we'll also take a look at is actually our task manager because as part of this auto tuning process, just like you, the user would, we're actually running a full real-time stability test during the increments of control that we're applying through the actual software to our hardware. So we can actually see here, if we open up our task manager, we're actually using all cores full real-time, 100% load. This is more than actually you would utilize when you're randomly using your system, whether it's web browsing, gaming, or any of those actual symptoms. And as we can see, it completed that initial portion of the stability test, so it's gone ahead and now gone over to the next increment of adjustment to attempt to increase our frequency further. And it will continually go through this process of actually fully utilizing the CPU, making an adjustment to voltage, frequency parameters, and continuing to scale up the actual frequency. This is what makes auto-tuning so cool and specific to our platform, is it's the only way that you're going to get an overclock that's custom specific to your system. As we can see here, we've gone ahead and now gone up to 4.6 gigahertz, and we're continuing with the stability test in terms of it, testing it, checking the actual overall reliability of the actual platform. So we're going to see what action we finalize out here shortly and see what auto-tuning extreme gets us. Okay, as we can see now, the actual system has gone ahead and shut down 
this was actually normal as part of the actual auto tuning process. Auto tuning actually detected that at that level, the actual system reached a level of instability. So at this point, the actual hardware on a UEFI level, so the actual uh, what we refer to in the legacy term BIOS, is communicating with the rest of our hardware. So that TPU chip, the DigiPlus power control implementations, and communicating what was the last successful frequency achieved. It's gone ahead and dialed in those values, and when we actually get back into the operating system, it will go with the last stable detected frequency. So we've gone ahead and once again seen that we have the reduced boot timer. So we're going to go ahead and get into the OS shortly here, and we're going to see what the actual finalized frequency was. Okay, as we can see here, we've gone ahead and completed actually our boot into the operating system. Auto-tuning has now actually advised us that it's completed the process successfully, and we now have an actual overclock of 4.6 gigahertz. So what we're gonna go ahead and last do is just go ahead and open up ADA. We're gonna do a secondary confirmation of our actual frequency that we've actually achieved. So we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up. We're gonna go to its CPU ID manager. And with our CPU ID manager, we can now successfully see that we've achieved a 4.6 gigahertz overclock along with a DDR frequency of 1364. And keep in mind, this is actually with a 32 gigabyte memory configuration. So even with eight DIMMs fully populated in the system, with our auto overclocking technology, we were able to scale up quite significantly. And you can see even when referencing stability, if we were to run an actual dedicated stability test, just like the stability test that we have built into our actual auto tuning process, we can still ensure stability of the platform. So you can, we can see here, with our actual stability test program, it's now gone ahead and utilized all cores, but yet the system is still maintaining normal operation. So this is showing you what auto tuning can provide to you.